We got it. And we're live on Instagram, right? Yes, we are. Awesome. We are. Hi, Instagram peoples. Hi, Instagram. Welcome. Welcome. Cool. Well, uh, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, ring the bell, and uh, follow us on social media. Today on the podcast, my new friend, fresh from Miami, photographer Quentin Peel. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey. How's everybody? Oh, man. It's fantastic to have you on the podcast, Quentin. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for being on, man. I know we uh, we met doing a, a Lee Pepper gig, and uh, we hit it off right away, man. Just couldn't stop chatting it up, and uh, I had to have you on, talk about your photography, and talk about moving out here to Vegas in the middle of all this insanity, man. I know. It's been it's been actually really wild, and it's kind of really great to like meet someone that actually like kind of connected instantly, especially on that artistic level. It was really nice, the fact that I just like opened up and you automatically knew what I was talking about, oh, which yeah. is awesome. I love that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you had so much good stuff to say, man. And I, uh, I love photography, and uh, and it's fun to just meet someone who can uh, really hold a good conversation in the middle of a, a long day of work. You know, it's, yeah. that's what keeps us going. Believe me, I can definitely hold a conversation. I know. It, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so tell me about your journey to Las Vegas, man. What sent you out here from Miami, and well, uh, how'd to that be, go? To be completely honest, I was actually born and raised here. Oh um, really? Yeah, I was born and raised here. I actually lived in Miami for about six years, um, but I moved. Um, I moved back here because I had a, a job offer, which is where we actually met, um, and I decided to. I decided to stay. Um, because the, the job became permanent. Um, so that kind of just kind of forced me back over here. But um, I'm just starting to kind of like move back into everything, you know, getting used to it. Because even though I was born and raised here, everything has changed. Yeah. Everything has changed so much here. It's crazy. It's like everything's the same, but changed. Yeah, I've so. been out here for like 15 years, man, and it's constantly shifting, and it's just an amorphous entity, yeah. Las Vegas. It's it's like almost brand new. Like I, I, it's like almost brand new. There's so many new things. We have a team now. Oh, I know. Like a couple two teams. teams. I have yeah. Two teams now. I know. We went from having no teams to the having two teams. Oh God, and dealing with the heat. <laughs> yeah, I'm not used to the 107, 115 anymore. So yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of humidity in Miami. I'd imagine yeah. it still is kind of a kind of a sweaty but place. Know, but it is a sweaty. But I I honestly prefer it. I I honestly prefer it. I feel like the life is getting sucked out of me here. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's a little sweaty. It's yeah. a little sweaty in Miami. Don't get me wrong. There's some days. <laughs> there are definitely some days. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, we uh, you know, heat's over, man. September now. I it's know. uh, I think I'm we got one last heat wave to get through, and then it'll be beautiful weather. I can't again, wait man. for a new season. I haven't lived through a new season in a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> gonna be nice, man. And uh, lots of new uh, not football games coming up. Cool events at the stadium. Elite yes. Stadium's got some amazing concerts and. Who knows what's going to happen with the uh, the pandemic and all the events that are supposed to be happening? God, I know. Hopefully, it keeps moving in the right direction. I know. I'm I'm really hoping that like you know everybody kind of like you know smartens up and we kind of like can just like do everything you yeah know, in the right way so nothing gets canceled. Oh, I know, right? It's like we're getting like a glimpse of like norm normalcy, and it's like I feel like it's getting taken away from us again. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like, man. A yeah. lot of shows canceling and uh, everything. We were just talking about this on the phone. I know. Camera, it's just kind of like pop-ups. If we're lucky, we get some pop-up shows, and we don't know when the yeah. next one's coming. And well, Yeah, I know, but we're feeling it from both ends yeah. as like the consumer and the worker. I know. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> it's, it's like we're feeling it from both ends. It's hurting our pockets, and we can't even spend our money on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm worried to even buy tickets to concerts at this point, man. I know. It's not even, it's honestly, I feel like that's a, that's a really big stretch at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I, uh, I bought tickets to the, the Primus show coming up in October. I'm a huge fan, obviously, of Primus, but, uh, so I have my tickets to that. We'll see if it goes through or not. And uh, but there's some great concerts coming up that like in December, and and we're just like, is that even worth That's spending not even, our it's money not even on? Worth like like paying it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I would wait. It, but then at the same time, you're kind of like scared because it's like then it's like if you wait and if it is still going on, it's like then everybody's <laughs> gonna be like bum rushing to get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Then tickets go up in price, and ugh. oh yeah. They got the uh, the ticket scalper websites now, which for some reason is legal, 
and you can sell everything for triple the cost of the uh, the that face value. Make any sense. I can't stand that. Yeah, <laughs> like it's why? Frustrating. It is, but hey, when it's in demand, make your money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know it. I know, and then they just uh, they drop new restrictions. I know the uh, what was it? The Guns N' Roses concert. All of a sudden, Allegiant Stadium had the the vaccine mandate, so you had to be vaccinated to go see the Guns N' Roses show out of nowhere and like everyone just started selling their tickets as fast as they could and that's it was a wild friggin mess man it's like but you love them but then you just don't want to go see them because of one little thing uh, that's yeah. kind of crazy to me uh, uh, yeah. I, I mean like I feel I feel like it's crazy on both ends yeah it's wild stuff man yeah yeah uh, but uh I don't know we'll see what happens with it we will it's Everyone's just getting backed in a corner at this point, being forced yeah, to do it. Yeah, we are. Hopefully, it's not a full shutdown like yeah. they did before. But, you know, hey, you know, if we have to do it, we have to do it. It's kind of one of those things. But I feel like this time, I think we're I think we're getting a little bit better. Yeah. yeah no, we're getting the, a little bit better. Yeah, I think we're getting. No one's really getting We're getting, like, anymore. worse but better at the same time. It's like I think we're all kind of getting it and we're kind of all tired of it. Uh, it's been like a really, really fast two years. It's taken a long time, but yeah. it's also been really fast. I, I I feel like it was just like December 2019. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden now it's like December. It's like September. <laughs> it's like, where did it go? I think I actually yeah. just posted a story today where someone, it was like a meme of someone just like closing their eyes and it was like December 19th and now all of a sudden it's like September 1st 2021 yeah. it's like it's where wild. did it go it'll be yeah. 2023 before we know it stop and yeah <laughs> it's gonna be three years before this whole shebang is over with man. I'm trying to slow this year down I'm turning 30 next year so it's are you like, yeah. oh, it's all over now, <laughs> I, know. Bro. I know it's all ending uh, uh, man I, I'm waiting for it I'm just like come on this needs to just slow down yeah. just this year this year's going way too fast already I'm like come on oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got so. used to that slow pace of just chilling inside, yeah. watching Marvel movies, and now it's like work's coming back, and you know, like days start yeah. cruising, and all of a sudden, like I mean, August just disappeared. So much yeah. stuff got booked for August. I don't even so know. I, it was such a blur for me. Yeah. August was such a blur. Honestly, I was so busy, which I'm very thankful for. I'm very grateful, like you know, that I was busy. But um, it's just it really did go by super fast. I don't even remember. A good portion of it, yeah. to be completely honest. <laughs> it was just work nonstop. It had, really I was had just the a whole month booked. Yes. I, I honestly, I think I had maybe a solid four days off. Yeah. Like a solid, a solid like four days. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it was like either a half day, quarter day, something. I was doing something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild, man. And then all of a sudden, everything is like back to, oh. I don't know. A bunch if of stuff I'm got canceled in yet. September. And now it's like scavenging for work. Yeah. <laughs> I might end up like getting unemployment again if I can. I don't know. If God, it's, you know, you know. It's, it's, it's wild how that just flipped back the other way, man. Yeah. It did a complete so fast. Like, 180. It really did. Good. I, I don't feel like we've completely flipped back, though. Yeah. I don't think we're, I think, I don't think that they're, I don't think we're going all the way back to the way that we were. But I mean, at the same time, I feel like with everybody's mentality, I feel like it's a very divided yeah. mentality at the moment. So it's just another thing that we have to conquer. Yeah. <laughs> On top of it, it's just like trying to get everybody at the same level, which is not happening. Everybody's making this situation yeah. more personal rather than as a whole which is what we need to do yeah, because that's the only way it's going to happen, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not happening. Yeah. But honestly, I have to say like during the pandemic and during the shutdown, um, despite, you know, the loss of lives and everything that was going on around me, but I have to say that I flourished. I really did flourish during the pandemic and being shut down and being stuck at home. Yeah. Like, uh, like what? I, I picked up some skills um, like I just like I because I was bored. I'm one of those people that I have to be out. I have to do something like being stuck inside is just not the vibe for me. Like I don't I don't like that. Like even when I have to go edit photos or something like that, I go outside of my home. <laughs> just, like, you know, I go to a Starbucks, a bookstore or something, something just to get like, you know, just to change up the scenery just so, you know, I could just I, I, for, for some reason I feel a little bit more creative. So I was like, well, I can't really go outside. I can't really do anything. I can't go to a Starbucks lobby. I can't do any of that. So I was like, what can I do? And I just passed by like one of these um, YouTube videos on YouTube one day. 
and it was just like how to make a bread. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I had like, and I like looked in my like, you know, cabinet and I was like, you know, I have yeast. I have, I was like, I have flour. I have some milk. I was like, I have some butter. I was like, hey, let me try this. Let me try it. And it was like, I just tried one time. Literally, it just, that's all it took was just like that one time. And then I was like fully invested. <laughs> um, and I like, <laughs> it was like fully invested. And I was like, hey, I can learn how to do this. And it was like really cool. Then I was like, I had fresh bread, like, for the first like week and then I was like oh I could try to do this and I was like let me try to do this and then I started getting a little bit more advanced and I found someone on YouTube that I actually follow and I loved the way he um I think he's actually I forget his YouTube name yeah um but he's got the most descriptive way of like baking and he's also teaching you while like he's doing it. and it was so amazing I learned actually so much from him and I was actually able to like create my own recipes that's awesome from him yeah but I actually learned how to do it which was actually very calming and um it taught me a lot of patience yeah because it takes a lot of patience like a full day things like it would like it would take like I didn't realize how long it took to make bread <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a lot of you I know this yeah. is like boring but like it was like wow I would sit there for four to five hours yeah. just sitting there and then like a whole day would be gone but like it taught me a lot like a lot of patience and stuff like that and a lot of different forms of creativity you should have seen my setup like because I started recording videos for like TikTok oh you do um, making yeah. the bread yeah, making bread. And I had this like full like frame set up like above. And because I couldn't get anything or order anything, I was yeah. just like, crap. So I had this little like phone tripod that I had that like curled up and I had like a little frame set up um, that was made for a backdrop. But I like just did it right there and I had it hanging from up top and had two lights um, to like... um just like just two like floodlights that I had from afar that I would just like because like I couldn't I couldn't order anything I couldn't get anything so it was just like I had to use what I had and I just did that and I was recording videos and just like learning how to do different things and it's kind of like crazy how like the growth of like from where I when I first started and that to like the end of the year it was like crazy. Now I actually have an actual skill. Now I have a little extra hobby. Making bread. Yeah, make it. I know that sounds a little. I know it has nothing to do with my photography, but then I started getting interesting with it, like in like getting like creative, like with the way I was setting it up and like you know putting together like you know different and getting aesthetically pleasing, you know like like with like you know stuff, and it was like cool. So I got to be creative while I also learned a whole new skill. That's awesome. I yeah. actually wanted to learn how to make sourdough bread. Angela was bringing home sourdough bread, and yeah. I never realized how much I like it until yeah. the pandemic. It became a big like staple in my snacking, mm -hmm. and like every dinner, I was making a, a nice piece of sourdough bread. And I like I got to make takes that shit. A very long time. Does it? Make, Did yeah. you make any? You made some sourdough bread during the pandemic. Uh, me and no? sourdough bread have a very very. Um, bad relationship oh yeah yes i have not made one successfully <laughs> ah yes it's uh, it, difficult is it yeah um, i mean everybody else that i've watched has made it seem like it's easy but it's definitely not uh -huh. um it takes uh the process of it is like almost a week um to make like a really good because you have to make a pre-ferment so it's like you have to like create this like whole science project before, oh, really? yeah, beforehand. I'm so serious. That's awesome. And then, like, now I'm going to look into yeah, it. Yeah, you really have to. Um, there's ways to do it out without that, but then it's not going to, it's not going to give you that, like, that sour dough uh, taste that you really want. Um, but, like, the longer you wait and the longer you do this, it's like basically you take flour, yeast, and you take water and you feed it every single day with more flour. And you like, and it really? grows. It's called a pre ferment. And it's like, and it grows. And you get it in like a little test tube. And basically, one day, my lazy self forgot to feed it. <laughs> <laughs> and it just did not like. And then, like, yeah. then the times that I did focus on it, because this was like a full month of me trying to do this. Yeah. Um, because, then, like I said, it takes like seven days for you to do this to make this pre ferment to get it sour. It has to taste sour. And it just didn't, I, I wasn't successfully getting it to rise well, because it has to, you have to get it to rise beginning before 
you bake it. So it's like it wasn't it wasn't rising correctly. And uh, I was just like so I just kind of gave up on the whole sourdough thing. What I, kind I, of well, bre- I what kind of bread were you making? Uh I made wheat bread, I've made honey wheat bread, I've made pumpernickel bread. Yeah. Um I've made ciabatta bread. I've made focaccia bread. I've made a baguette. Oh, which you were is, getting down. Yeah. I was I had nothing but time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had nothing but time. Exactly. And I think the only thing that was open was Walmart. So it was easily accessible to like just go get more yeast and more flour. Yeah. To, yeah. Oh <laughs> man. That's funny. That's funny. All right, let's get down to the... Sorry. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's a podcast. Just fucking talk about yeah. all kinds of shit. <laughs> but I got some photos in front of me of uh, some of your work. And uh, let's talk about some of your photography here. Who's this gentleman? Uh, that's sadly me. I'm just kidding. No, um, that, <laughs> that is me. Um, this was actually taken by um, a photographer in Miami. His name is Ikigai on Instagram. He's was kind enough to do an, a birthday shoot for me. Um, and I had never really truly modeled before, but I, I kind of wanted to give it a nice little like twirl, a little experiment. Um, but I was actually able, because I knew he was really busy during this period of time. So I was like, hey man, like, I'd like to take the load off. Like I can edit them. Like, you know, it's not like you, I don't do this. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, we could do kind of like a collab situation like that. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I, um, even though he took the picture, I did edit it. Um, this was actually taken in a nice little like dark back painted alleyway. You would never know. Nice. And it had a, like a nice little like screen top on the and what kind of editing were you doing in this photography? Um, right here, um, if you see, um, I did a little just like frequency separation, um, which is what you you see when you get closer to like the face. Um, I just right. added a little bit of extra highlight, um, which I do with a curves adjustment. And then on the top, I added in a fake flare. Um, I didn't really want to do much to this because honestly, I didn't really... Honestly, it was me. It was a picture of me. So I was just like, eh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was like, oh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of wanted to get it out for birthday. But honestly, there was no like creative direction that I was really kind of going with this. I was just kind of going with the vibe of like what I felt. And then it gets a little sexier. <laughs> yes, I'm extremely hairy. Um, this one, I actually had a lot more detail. Um, I added in, and um, I actually really liked this one. This one actually did really well on Instagram for me as well. I think I, I got a good, decent amount of likes, and a lot of people liked it. It got a kind of featured on a few pages as well. I can't quote you on the names of the pages, but I also did a little bit of frequency separation. Did um. Now, what do you mean by frequency separation? Frequency separation is like it's a form of skin retouching. Okay. So that's Um, where the skin looks nice and polished and shiny like that? um, Yeah. So basically um, I like to do – so like from afar it looks really really smooth. But if you zoom in, you get um, get texture. And that's kind of like a huge thing for me um, is that like everybody likes that like super like face-tuned look, like where they kind of look like a – or they've got no pores. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's just not realistic. Um, and that's something I can't sit there and talk crap about. I kind of <laughs> used to do that. Um, but it's not It's not so much because I wanted to. It was because I just didn't know how to do this yet. Okay. So um, frequency separation is, fre- um, you know, it's separating high and low frequencies and basically you're taking the bottom layer uh, and the top layer and you're just you're separating them so therefore I'm te- separating the texture and I'm separating the smoothness so you're adding in like kind of like a blur and then you're separating the texture from that blur and then you're just painting on top what you want so um, I use a magic brush to kind of go over and just kind of like use it to like manipulate the skin so it like pulls the skin um, around so then I can control like where you could see like how like there the light is like focused like the brightness is focused on the center of the face okay. um, and, and then I kind of manipulate the, the dark shadows around to kind of create a nice little like kind of like um, what is the word I'm looking for more um, structure on oh. the face no, it looks fantastic like that work is and, great super pro looking man 
Thank you. This was also shot by Ikigai, by the way. Ikigai? Yeah, and I Ikigai. I think just one more with uh, with you as the, pro, yes. uh, the uh, model. Yes. And, and again, um, look at that face work. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I am laughing because that's funny. Um, but yes, uh, that is, this is also done the same thing. Um, I kind of just, like, like I said, I centered. I did a, a frequency separation, so the skin retouching on this. I didn't do so much um, everywhere, but I did um, fake some highlights on here on the shoulder and the bicep to draw a little bit more attention okay, um, yeah. to kind of bring the eye more towards the upper part of the picture because I didn't really like the fact that I kind of looked a little chunky when I was sitting down <laughs> and I didn't want to like scoot. I don't know. That's just that I was being a little bit judgmental of myself, you know, when I was critical. And then I added a little sun flare on the top left hand corner. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. If you could see, and then yeah. I added a little extra That's highlight. Sensor. Yeah, he used um, he used the off the off the camera um, lighting. I forget what kind of light he had. Otherwise, I would give you more detail. Right. Um, but yeah. And then there's uh, some cool Spider-Man ones that you got. Yes, here this too, is which is pretty interesting. This is actually the picture of this one is actually two different. This is actually three different pictures. Right here. This is actually of my friend Pachuco. Um, his name is Sal, but I call him Pachuco. Um, and he's like, he's kind of a nerd like me. Um, <laughs> and he loves, he's got a couple of like Spider Man costumes. And it's a killer Spider Man costume. Yeah. And he's actually, um, I had, there's a little backstory to like with him as well. Um, there, there was a time um, where I, I got robbed from my um, from my my equipment and everything like that, and he actually helped me um, buy my new camera. Oh, wow. um, so like, and I just like kind of wanted to help, like, and I just like promised him, like, whenever you have a photo shoot or any any time you want a photo shoot, like, it's it's free, like, you know what I mean. Course, so I kind of yeah. like went all out. Because, like, he had this, and I was, like, really wanted to... I also really wanted to do this because he had a Spider-Man costume, and I was like, hey, we definitely need to try this. But this is actually kind of cool. I wish I had the original photo that you could see. Um, but it's basically what he's standing on is, like, the edge of a, of a driveway, like of, like, of a parking garage. Like, he's on the top, and there is a pole right behind him as well. So I got rid of the pole... Um, this was like an orange where his hand is at. It was orange. So I made it completely bag, added a little rustic feel to it. Um, I blurred out the back as well. So that's why he's a little bit more cheap. He had a little bit of um, folds on the top of his head. So I got rid of that. And then I just literally got um, a, a um, the stock photo from Adobe Stock. And I just got an, a, a few view of a city. And I just blended it all in it looks great it actually is one of my favorite photos i'm not gonna lie it's, it's fantastic it's actually one of my favorite photos it was well, actually he... the longest photo that i have actually spent time on oh, on editing yeah, on editing because like i couldn't make up my mind <laughs> <laughs> and then you got this one with him flying through the air which yes. came out great man how'd you do that actually this was an upshot um he i had him jump from that um that edge and I was just literally laying on the ground and okay. I just had him go like this. And um, I guess I was scared of him falling back from the other way because we're on a parking garage and we we're really high up. So I just had him jump and I was like, hey, jump this way. And I'd rather you land on my face than fall back. Like, yeah. you know, so I did that. And then I just did another up view like um, city. This one was a little bit more difficult because the lighting, it was golden hour. Um, so with it being golden hour i had to match the light um and i couldn't find the right picture that could match the light because the lighting was coming from the left hand side but you can clearly tell in the in the up view picture it was coming from the it was coming from the right so i had to redirect the whole lighting situation and kind of blend it in more Oh, wild man! So that was a that was probably the most difficult part about this picture. Other than that, just kind of like adding it on, it was actually not that hard. <laughs> actually, kind of fit perfectly. When I put this in, I was like, "Oh, this is kind of like literally this." The position it's in was literally the first position that I got put in, and I was like, "This works." <laughs> and I think, did you give me two of the same picture? Did is I? there something different with this one, or is this the same? Oh yeah, that was the corrected. That was a corrected one. The one okay. that I had sent you at first was not the correct lighting. Oh, but, yeah. okay. 
Awesome. Awesome. And I think you got one more Spider-Man one. Yes, I have one more Spider-Man one. (laughs) (laughs) I sent you kind of just a collection of, like, stuff, so. And then this one here. This one is crazy because I I did an up view shot. Um, There was a little, like, dumpster area, and I went on top. And all I just had him do was just kind of, like, put his hand and look up. So he actually is not crawling anything. Um, This was, though, I think this is the one that did the best on, like, in social media-wise. Because it looks like I curved the building, um, the wall that it's in. It was actually, you could see that I curved the wall because I didn't, I wanted to make it look a little bit more realistic. And I was like, eh, building could be curved. Um, But I added in the manipulate, I, I got a, up view uh, a down view actually of a city and i just added it in under and then i added in an extra drop shadow under him right near his leg to make it look a little bit more realistic oh it comes out great and then you have some of these uh fantastic shots of uh some male models that you're working with yes this is um carlos um I would be lying to you if I told you his last name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, he is he is actually a fitness um, instructor. He's got like a whole like fitness um, Instagram at the moment. Um, he's, he's pretty he's pretty up there with like followers and influence. Um, I got to work with him uh, with this camera. I was using a Canon 6D yeah. um, with I think an 85 millimeter. With this one, I kind of, I don't know why I chose such a wide lens for it, but like, honestly, it worked out really well with this. Um, I, this was, I was using my coworker's backyard, which by the way, dude, that is like the best backyard I've ever been in. Um, she's got um, this place, there's a place in uh, Miami where it's like more farmland. Um, so she's got like maybe about three to four acres of land and um, she, she, her whole backyard was a lagoon. So like <laughs> a lagoon, like they had like a fresh water, um, like waterfall God and dang, everything amazing. like and it had like it was building its own ecosystem. That's how big it was. Wow. Um, it had like fishes and had like. um it's like this shot here where he's in the water. Yeah, literally, that's the same. That's the same place. Um, that's in the water. It's got like natural fish. It's got like turtles around it, um, and it's all it's all like fresh water, and it's and it's recycled itself and everything like that. It's already brought in its own organism and life in it. It's really really cool. Like honestly, probably the coolest backyard to date that I have ever seen. And they built it themselves. I like this one. Um, yes. Um, that's ridiculous. Yeah, this is her backyard, backyard. still. So, like yeah, this jungle, is literally yeah. her backyard. It's a whole lagoon. It's not her their whole backyard. Yeah. So it's but it's a huge chunk of it. Um and it's kind of crazy. It literally looks like it's not even in Miami um at all. And then um I think we got this shot too where he's got the pillars around him. Yes. Um no, this is um this is actually here in local in Vegas. It's actually I is recently that? just did this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is um, with Eli. He's actually um, a, he's actually a singer. He's a Latino singer. Um, oh, does, I he, just, uh, does he sing in Las Vegas and in like a local show or anything like that? I think he does. He does some local shows. I know that he has a couple gigs, but a couple of the things that I know that he's working at is in either in Mexico or L.A. Okay. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, I'm pretty. I'll be sure to ask him a little bit more detail on that. But he definitely um, does a couple of gigs. Um, he's Honestly, a really nice person. He's the second photo shoot I have done here in Vegas so far, and he was so easy to work with. Um, he knew he knew himself, um, which, um, as every photographer knows, that working with a model that just knows who they are and what they bring to the table is probably the best photo shoot um, because it, it, there was really no instruction. It was just kind of like immediate like he just knew what to do what to pose what to wear it was it was amazing all i had to do was just pick location and take the great pictures and edit that's awesome when he makes your life easy for you yes it's it's wonderful when models are models (laughs) (laughs) yeah 
Sometimes you got to lead them by the nose, man. I mean, yeah. Do you know what? Don't get me wrong. I Like, even with models being models, you still have those, like, you know, those times where you want to, like, oh, like, I really like this. Like, move your face this way. Turn your body that way. Of course, you give those instructions. But, like, when you're completely teaching, that's, that's. Yeah. That's that's struggle. A little frustrating. It is a little frustrating because it's like, you know, I'm the photographer, not the model here. Right. And as you know, we're not the best models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were having fun taking pictures before. The yeah, podcast. I know. It's, hard, it's uh, hard when you're on the other side of the lens. Yeah, huh? it is, it is, it is. I, uh, I give them I give them definitely some I definitely give them props. Because it definitely is hard. You can't, a lot of people don't realize that it actually is kind of hard to know what you look like without seeing yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Well, how about we move on the other direction, which you have, uh, you gave me some of your older work. We can see the evolution of it oh, all. Oh, God. We can go back to some of your newer no. work. Oh, so right. this is somebody who is uh, <laughs> this beautiful bride you have. Uh, right okay, here. so this was this is my mom's best friend, Petrina, and this is when I my grandfather gave me his older Nikon, um, I think D three thousand. It was it was it was old. Um, and I was just so persistent about like, she was like, Oh, I'm still looking for a photographer. Mind you, I didn't even know how to edit or do anything of that sort. I barely knew what ISO was or how to control the shutter speed. Oh yeah. Um, it, it, this was, this was really bad. This was me having a lot days, more confidence man. than I probably should have. But I, I took these pictures and she, she finally caved and she was just like, yeah, she's like, you know what? I, I believe in you, and um, there's a story behind this. It it, it started off bad. Honestly, yeah. it started off bad. Um, first of all, I didn't know how to work the flash. It didn't. <laughs> work. <laughs> I found out that the flash that I used didn't have batteries in it. Um, oh. So that that was that was already bad right there. So we had to run and get batteries, and then um, I almost because I was putting it in everything, the batteries and everything, and I almost missed her walking down the aisle. Oh God. <laughs> it's like a wild Oh God, it was like it was it was there was it was just going downhill. And mind you, this is like my mom's best friend. So I was like really not trying to like make it they were walking slow, slow on purpose because they knew I was putting in bad <laughs> The embarrassment that I felt because all these people knew me. So this was like, it was even worse. That's what made it even worse. Um, also, I edited all of this on, um, if you look at it, if you take a look, I edited all of this on iPhoto. Oh, did you? Yes. Um, as you can tell, the warmth on the photo is high, like oh, yeah. really, really high. Um and I used her veil as like something to be creative, but like you can clearly see that it's like there. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, it, I thought that tilting my camera at this time was being extremely creative. <laughs> 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 uh, the, the, there's so many wrongs in this um yeah. I, I definitely don't edit anywhere or even shoot like this at all remotely close but it's um, fun you know you, you 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 put yourself in this situation now my friend because you gave me all these old photos to show off i know it's okay oh god <laughs> <laughs> um so yes this is also still patrina's wedding um, again, with the warmth, um, this is just making me feel like I'm at the center of the sun. Um, yeah, a lot of reds. <laughs> oh God, it's so it's so harsh. Yeah. Um, I it's kind of funny that like you know since we were doing this, this actually just popped up as a memory on Facebook, so it was kind of perfect. Oh okay. That's why I was like, oh great, this 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 is this a long time ago. Um, this was like over seven years ago. This is before I even like really like took like a leap into like trying to make photography a business. I was, this was more just like a hobby. It was just going around snapping pictures of everything. Yeah. Cause I was like, ah, oh, I just love That's doing this. What um, you gotta do. Yeah. You know, you gotta, I know it's still a passion. I still have that in me. I still have that. It yeah. Out and like, yeah. Like you were, like you were saying, you know, learning like what the ISO and your aperture settings and shutter yeah. speeds and all these different things, man. It's like, they, it's, 
it's hard. You can always just grab a camera and put it into auto mode and go, I'm a photographer. Yeah. And it's like learning all the basics of every single thing that's happening on the camera and then God, what your I end product is trying to look like. I wish people understood that. I yeah. really do wish under people, people understand. They just think that we're just like button pushers. Yeah. Like we're just like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, why don't you push this button and see if it comes out right yeah. and see if this works, if this setting works in every setting that you're in. It's not going to. It's so hard, man. God. And like I was out doing some astrophotography um, trying to capture some meteor showers and then do some special effects stuff with like the rotation of the planet yeah. with the stars and you know get that spiral effect when the star is all you yeah. pointed at the north star and yes so it takes forever and i just started just reading and reading and reading about everything yeah. and then the rest of the time we were out there like uh the top of a mountain staying in a cabin doing these uh this photography session uh i i was adjusting all my settings manually shooting everything in different lighting settings and trying to get starbursts and figuring yeah. it all out and it was just I was, man this is such a complicated thing it it's so it not is. point and click i did i don't have the i don't have the picture on display but i do have a couple of like astro photography but it's so hard yeah. to get like in an area that's dark enough especially like that's one that's one thing i have to do here when i'm here in like um Cause it was like the longest I, I I had the hardest time doing it because I didn't have a lens that like, you know, had the right like F stop, you know, like for like, you know, for me to get it in the right aperture, you know, to like, you know, for me to capture everything that I wanted to get. But once I did, it was, then it was like the hard time finding the location. Well, I ended up having to go like down to the keys in this like really remote dark spot. And it still wasn't as like as decent as I could get it. And yeah. I'm not sure if you know what Florida mosquitoes are like no i do not i have not but it, it makes yet. the it makes the stay so much harder yeah I like, bet. yeah so it was like it was like probably only like a two hour thing and that was me me going taking the picture and then running back to my car yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and a lot of that you just got to set it to uh to auto shoot and yeah. like long, super long exposures and then just let it run I and thankfully don't, don't touch the camera on a tripod. Kind of thankfully, I learned because with Canon, we have like the camera, Canon Camera Connect. Oh yeah. And then like I just put it on bulb mode, so therefore it just keeps it open yeah. as long as I want and until I stop it. So, but the only problem that I was running into because it's like there's only a one way road in and out of the keys, so I was running into the like light infer interference of the cars going by. Oh. So, I know. It, it was just not like that's why I'm kind of happy I'm back here in Vegas that I get to like I get to see that like I get to go back into the mountains I can't wait to see that I haven't gone yet oh yeah uh, I know we definitely need to do that dude honestly. there's we some definitely great do. spots like up in Utah I like to go camping and there's just mountains everywhere and it's super yeah. isolated it's fantastic and you just get beautiful shots of the stars I really yeah, need to do yeah. That. It's, it's I need awesome. that for my soul. Yeah, and the really weather's do. about perfect right now, man. Yes. Like now's the time to be doing it for I sure. I want it a little cold though. I yeah, mean, I do. I want it a little bit. Oh, it cold. gets cold up in the hills, man. I know. I, I mean, really by the time October cold. rolls around, it's you got to be bundled up. I'm gonna sleep like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a we got a great setup, me and Angela, man. We uh, we take out the uh, air mattress and the, the portable toilet and a big old tent and space heaters and battery powered fans. Like we have everything we need to just stay like comfortable when that's, we're out that's there. Awesome. The and then portable we can go toilet shoot. definitely. I oh, can see dude. that being very useful. Oh yeah, it's Honestly. it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 awesome. The couple times I've camped. Uh, <laughs> There was no portable toilet. Yeah. That's all I'm saying on that subject. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's, it's when we do like some, sometimes uh, me and the boys will do like a hiking excursion where we just bring what we can in a backpack and like small tents or just sleep outside. And, uh, and yeah, it was just digging a hole in the middle of the woods. And that's, that's always a pain. Yeah. yeah it's, that is a pain. I've done that. You know, <laughs> there was this one time that I went camping and we forgot toilet paper. So, that oof. Was, yeah, that was, that was, like I said, no more. No, <laughs> <laughs> no more on that topic. Uh, oh, that, 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 that was a that was a hard rough right that was there, a hard yeah. couple of days. That was a hard I couple. Of, yeah, I, I didn't even want to eat. Yeah, right. On purpose. Yeah, you're just like let's not produce any more of this. Yes, that's <laughs> hilarious. Jeez, Louise, man, <laughs> that's so funny. 
Yeah, but we should definitely uh, we should definitely do something. We definitely like that, need man. some astro photos. Oh definitely. yeah, it's a lot of fun. To, you it know, is go out there to camp out, tripod, and just let it roll and it chill by the stars. I drag my non-photographer friends to do it, so it'd yeah. be nice to do it with a photographer that's not going to be antsy. They're going to be. Oh, yeah, we'll be yeah, setting up cameras everywhere. Yes, I'm everywhere. crazy when I go out. I'm setting time lapses for the uh, the sunrise and time lapses for the sunset. And we're shooting the stars and then I'm shooting like meditation videos and yoga videos and stuff. That's and, awesome. And now our next thing, we just got a 512 gigabyte, uh, like I think it's 90 megabytes a second. So we shoot 4K. Okay. And we're going to just leave up Angela's uh, Fuji X-T4 in 4K okay. mode and capture just shots like uh, landscape shots and let it just play live. And we're gonna put like chill lo-fi over it and put those Oof, on YouTube. That sounds dope as hell. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I think it's gonna be awesome, man. Like I love those chill lo-fi stations, but a lot of the ones that you see, it's like an anime thing yeah. or something, which is great. I love that stuff. But I think like a 4K shot of like a lake just chilling and animals coming in and out of frame, and I feel like that lo-fi has been like the thing lately. I've been yeah. hearing about. I haven't really gotten super into it. I can't even be a judge of it or at all. Like That's I just, I haven't. I honestly. I just started like the kind of stepping into it like I'm like okay I've heard this enough for me to like kind of search yeah. what it sounds like you know what I mean like yeah so I definitely have to like look up into that anymore but I know what you're talking about with the vibe though I, I do understand the vibe of lo-fi but I, I feel like I've only heard like maybe one or two artists and it's like on dude I, I don't even know the artists man I listen to like Chilled Cow which is like the most popular lo-fi okay. station and that one's fantastic but then I'll find a bunch of random ones throughout and, and they make everything like you know there's great old like like Zelda lo-fi and we were listening to Cowboy Bebop lo-fi like everyone kind okay. of you know takes a you know like a pop culture trend and like blends it together with these lo-fi beats and you know it's, it's just whatever you, you can that's think of that's actually cool. out there yeah it's fantastic so it's more it's more anime like kind of anime like related. Well, I mean, uh, of... it's easy to make a a still image kind of move a little. Okay. And so they'll take a still image and make it move, and then they'll just put like endless loops or like four hours of lo-fi on it, and it'll just keep repeating the same image over and over again. Okay. Which we want we want to take the a different approach, which is the 4K live like nature videos, and have it run, and maybe bring my carbon I slider. Like that have the carbon slider kind of do some shots and fade it okay. into some other shots and maybe add a time lapse in here or there to like switch scenes or, you know, we're just going to experiment with it and put I it online. I feel like the time lapse is definitely going to be a vibe. Oh, but I dig I, time I feel lapses. Like, yeah, I feel like it's, that's honestly, that's the ultimate goal that I yeah. want to reach at is doing like a time lapse with astrophotography. Yeah. That is definitely the goal. Like just getting that, like, but the lighting situation that's and true. like changing that is, I was watching, I, I've definitely watched a couple of like, like in you know instructional videos like on how like some tutorials I don't know why I said instructional videos yeah um, tutorials same on thing. like yeah same thing yeah. you know whenever I was bringing it back to like reading Rainbow Days instructional videos <laughs> 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 um, tutorials on like you know just on how they do it and I'm just like if you don't get it right like right then and there it's yeah, like you're it's, whole, it's literally gone and I'm just like that's so upsetting yeah. like You'll imagine working on like something five for hours a, oh no like mm -hmm. that would be so upsetting I would be I'm like you know it's gonna happen yeah I know I know it's going to yeah that's just have multiple cameras doing it so therefore one of them has to go right yeah yeah and a lot of times I'll do uh you know I'll go out and we'll stay like three nights in a location and I try to get every sunrise and sunset and sometimes I'll leave with like I'll get two sunrises and one sunset yeah, yeah. out of the deal because like sometimes the sunset doesn't look right or people start like people walk in front of your camera or the camera will get knocked over or animals will mess with it. That's yeah. always a fun one. I mean, I, it's more understandable, un understandable for the animals yeah. than the humans. Yeah. It's like, come on, you see me taking a picture. Yeah. Or Angela put the paper towel right in front of the camera. Oh, you know, no. Like, no. <laughs> There was that old video. <laughs> uh, that's what happened on the last one we were out. But yeah. I still ended up with two good, two good time lapses out of the deal over the over the little weekend we spent out. So, but yeah, that's that's kind of the game, man. Unless okay. like, like some people will actually sit there in front of the camera the whole time, and be like, "You're not touching my camera," and I'll usually I'll, I have a good setup where I got a nice brick battery, mm -hmm. and I'll plug it into the camera and put a really big card in it and just leave it. 
And like yeah. by the time I come back, it hasn't even drained the brick and it's been like yeah. five hours. And so that's fantastic for me. And it's just like a GoPro or something like that. I or a cam park. So I have these cam park ones that'll do 4K time lapses. Okay. And they're like forty, fifty dollars for the camera. And you know, it's like even if it totally gets trashed, I'm not even worried about it. You know, like I can just put them in risky locations and cross my fingers and hope for the best and you get it back you're like that's pretty dope that is that is a that is actually really scary though like to like put like in certain things it's like you want it like the situations that i feel like photographers put themselves in and even their equipment knowing how expensive it is and it's just like there's no sense of fear that we have but then all of a sudden i feel like after the fact when we think about it we're like wait that was that was not good like <laughs> like i feel like i've done that a lot where i have been like i've put myself like on the edge of a building to like capture a good shot i've gone on the edge of a mountain to capture a good shot like it's like the things that you do and like in that moment i'm like okay this is kind of scary but i'm like i really want to try this i really like it's like that that that, that creativity like kind of like that that circle like that wheel that wants you to like do it and you just kind of like put that fear behind you that you oh, want yeah. to and it's just like that's why like like going with another photographer that's someone that has like that same like that creative like want is is necessary because like i feel like it's like you get that fear put instilled in you when you have someone that's not like or they're like why are you doing that like that's kind of <laughs> like why are you like and it's like stop like just let me do it yeah. <laughs> like don't let me i'm already believe me i'm not stupid like uh, i know that there's a there's a fear factor in here there's definitely like life-threatening things that we have done i'm pretty sure you have done as well just to, oh yeah just to get that like nice shot and it always winds up being worth it, it oh always, yeah it totally. always winds up being worth it i had a great shot i uh angela and i went out with another photography friend to arizona in this forest and we were like 25 miles deep in this forest and he's like there's this great cliff but yeah. it's way on the other side of this thing and like well you know it, it took forever to get to because we're off-roading the whole way but it was beautiful it's just this beautiful gorge and like there's a city way in the distance that lights up at nighttime, but you can't see it in the daytime because it's so far away. But um, I was trying to find a good spot to capture the sunset, and I just couldn't get anywhere. There's too many trees in the way, and I ended up having to climb out on this cliff and, like, edge my way over and then, like, claw a GoPro on a tree branch, like, hanging out over the top of a cliff and then, like, <sighs> scurry my way back in real quick. And I, I just left it there. Uh, and I was like, that, you know, I was really stoked about the shot and I wasn't thinking about it. And then I get back on the cliff and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And then, uh, you know, the reality sets in. I got to climb back out there in two hours when it's pitch black and grab that thing. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, you didn't think about that, did you? Oh. Oh, I was like, why would you do that? Yeah, I just wanted the good shot, man. And I was, get that you. was I the get shot, you. so you go after it. But yeah, fucking I idiot, man. I understand. I get it. I get it. The things, like I said, the things that you do, because like in that shot probably was so, so was prime. Great. So prime. It was like, great. Ah. Uh, yeah, you I got to show me that shot there. later. You I will. I, I, I definitely have it on this computer. I can okay. show it to you after Go we're done with podcast. Definitely. I got a few time lapses on there that I haven't um, I haven't done anything with yet. I've kind of been getting a little collection going, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I've been focusing more on the meditation and the yoga stuff, which probably should be out by the time this podcast airs. I'm going to okay. have some time next week to wrap them all up. They're like both really close to being done, and those are all shot out in nature too. Well, I feel like that's... That's a better focus. Yeah, it really it's is. a lot easier. But at the same time, like we went and ah. did, um, we did a couple meditation shots, and I like actually had to climb up on top of this like rock hanging out over a cliff, and we we're like, the yeah. shot's friggin' perfect, and it looks great. But it's like now I'm sitting on this rock with my ankles on, on you know stone, and it hurts yeah. like shit. And yeah. it's like just sit there for like 15, 20 minutes, or one where we found this great stream, and there's this perfect little cove where the stream comes out, and there's like you know, lots of greenery and like a rock that's nice, sits right in between it all. But like I, I got myself a position and we get the cameras rolling and then I just start getting eaten alive <laughs> by mosquitoes and bugs Dude. and everything while I'm trying to sit there peacefully and meditate. And, uh, and somehow I managed to get through it 
and you know we got the shot but i was like we had to start over several times where i was just like you can't handle it yeah you're just like there's like six mosquitoes on my arms just all sucking my blood dry and i just like i had to just swipe them off for a second and uh yeah it it was ridiculous man but i was like i'm gonna get through this i'm gonna get this shot because it looks great and uh and it's gonna be worth it in the end mosquitoes are the worst yeah they really are. I honestly don't understand their existence. <laughs> <laughs> they do nothing for us <laughs> at uh, all. They're yeah. like literally they just cause pain and itchiness, yeah. which is pain eventually. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're more for the the viruses and bacteria they spread. On, it's, yeah, it's I mean, like, nice like I said, those creatures that exist in this world. Exactly. Like I said, they're doing nothing good yeah. for us. At not all. for us, but we're not the only thing out there, man. I know. Well, hey, you know? do you know what? <laughs> then we need to put more frogs. Uh, <laughs> more frogs so they can eat them i'm just kidding we don't uh, need any more invasive things right <laughs> yeah they're not you know they're for the bacteria and viruses man they're fantastic for bacteria and viruses just like bees are fantastic for flowers yes. you know and they pollinate and spread everything around and I birds completely... spread seeds for trees and mosquitoes spread viruses and bacteria <laughs> it's just we don't want the bacteria and viruses. yeah we the don't bacteria and viruses want to spread they're all into the spreading yeah like, they definitely good for need to find a host <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a really it's, bad science joke. It's always <laughs> <laughs> it's always the human perspective yeah. that we we take in the world, and it's uh, yeah, and it's ultimately t- totally not about us, but we think it we think it is. It always yeah, feels like it's it a, is. It's a, it's a human entitlement. I yeah, mean, yeah. Oh, it's easy to get wrapped up in, man. But I'm pretty sure other animals would not like mosquitoes too. I oh, definitely. I, I don't think that we're the only ones that dislike them. No, everything they're eating yeah, is pretty I think, pretty upset. I think it, I yeah. think that that's a universal thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, mosquitoes are sons of bitches. Yeah, they really are. Honestly, I I love all of the creations on Earth, and those are the one thing that I could get. I would choose those to get rid of those over spiders, and I can't stand spiders. Yeah, spiders are super important. Yeah, no, I but hate, I, I, I hate but, having to kill spiders. Ah, uh, don't. You don't have to. No, you just put them out in the garden. Yeah, I just like I've gotten over the fear of like moving them. Yeah, like just like okay, there's no need to kill you. Like blah blah blah. Do you want to? Except there is this one. Um, but in Florida, and this is where I actually gained a little, actually more love for spiders. This is so random how we just got on this topic. I just really it's thought about it. Podcast but yeah, it's yeah. Fun. But I was like, um, but like we were, um, there was this spider on the corner of like the entrance of my door in my apartment and I just kept it there. And the reason why is because there's so many mosquitoes in the web. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's you're doing them. me a huge favor. So I'm going to keep you there. Yeah. I was like, I actually, there's a couple times I would kill a mosquito and I would just like throw it on the web. <laughs> I was like, keep doing your, keep doing God's work. That's it, man. It's <laughs> beautiful whenever you look at it the right way. Yeah, you know, and it's, it just is. Gonna, it's just going to sit in its web and never bother anybody. And yeah, and never eat all the pests that flying around your house. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I dig it, man. I dig it. Yeah, you know, it's all about perspective in this world. It is. It is. It just sometimes we all we get. It's fear. Honestly, yeah. I feel like a lot of things that like we get misguided by is just it's with fear with when we're using that as our forefront. Yeah. As our lens. My buddy Tommy, uh, he always would uh, he always likes to say every decision you make in this life is either made out of fear or love. Yeah. And he goes and you just got to do your damnedest to make every decision out of love. Yeah. Well, I feel like if you're scared of it, you should do it. <laughs> 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 honestly like i know that uh, i know that's kind of crazy but i feel like everything that i've been scared of everything that i was fearful of doing like being for being a photographer yeah because i knew the struggle of being an artist in general it's something that i didn't really want to put my main focus on or like really put my all into but it came down to it that like i would rather i would rather do what i love and you know at the end of the day but it was that fear of failing yeah. and like that i always kept of like doing and i was like it's art what the hell am i failing on yeah like you know like i like i was like the only thing that i'm failing on is myself by not doing it so you know that's just that's just one example it's just like you know like if you let fear hold you back instead of like seeing something as fear is just something that's unknown or it doesn't have a full answer to. And I feel like 
finding that answer. I'm so happy I did. Like, you know, I really am. Like, I, I might not be at the complete spot that I really want to be at, but I'm still doing what I want to yeah. do. I don't think we ever day. find that complete spot no, either. No, you never right? It's do. always like this hypothetical place where you're going to yeah. get there. And like, you know, even in my career right now, I do amazing things as an audio engineer. And there's still this feeling inside of me like uh, one day I'll I'll get to this grand level of it yeah. where I'll be doing, you know, I'll be I'll be I'll really be this big, big shot audio engineer. And it's like. I was literally just flying big K2 line arrays in MGM Grand Garden Arena, and, and it's like I'm, I was mixed in front of house for a, a band at the same stage Elvis used to perform on, and it's like in the back of my head, I'm like, one day, one day, one day I'll get there, and it's like, <laughs> when? What else do you no. need to do, you know? But uh, yeah, I think no matter what level you achieve, it's always going to feel uh, that you're way. You're always going to want to upgrade. You're yeah. always going to want to do something a little bit better. It's just remaining. I, I get I get your point. It's very valid. It's just kind of keeping yourself humble and realizing that, like, you, you kind of are at the point. You just you just see yourself in wanting to do more. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's the wonderful thing about being an artist or anything that has to do with art is that like you're always pushing yourself we are we're always we're our biggest critics our own selves like there's no one that could tell me anything about my photos that i have not already said about <laughs> myself <laughs> or like they, uh, i have gone through it i have said it about myself i've done it to myself i, I critique my photos harder than anybody else could ever so, um, but at the same time, it's what keeps me going. It's the, it's like, oh, I like this. I like this or I don't like this. So it's like for the next photo shoot, I might improve something or I might decrease something. I might take away something that is going to get that vision that I want it right now. But then, you know, a couple months down the road when I like see that photo again, I'm like, eh. like, you know, like, uh, you know, I didn't really like it. Like, you know, but like yeah. during that time, it's just like, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I'm so proud of this product. Yeah. Like, I'm so proud of this picture, the way that it came out. Or maybe I was really proud of like the location or the outfit or like, you know, the model or just, or the overall, the whole overall situation. It was just like a really good vibe. And it's just like, there's always things that we want to tweak. Like, for example, like you had said, um, like, like, you know, like reaching a certain spot, like Miami Swim Week. Okay. I went from meeting, I, I went from doing like 50 to hundred dollar photo shoots and giving so many like photos. I, I was like undercharging way like undercharging, but I didn't care. Like I was like more doing it and I still am to this day doing it because I want to do it. Like, you know, like it's, it's for the love, but you know, love is not paying my bills. So <laughs> <laughs> as much as I wish it could. Yeah. Um, but it's like I was doing that and like I didn't look at that situation. I look at it now, now, like, you know, looking back. But like when I was in it, I didn't realize how like, wow, like I was around photographers that had been in the business for 20 plus years that were making like almost a couple stacks to be there. Like, you know, like. And it's kind of crazy to think about that. I was like, I was surrounded by them. And I'm like, how did I get here? Like, you know, like, and I just didn't think I was like, oh, I just can't wait to like be one of the, I kept on looking on the outside of the picture rather than realizing that I was actually with them. Yeah. Like I was there, I was there. But all I could think about is like, oh, I can't wait till I get to their point. <laughs> yeah when you're already at yeah, their when i was actually yeah. already there and it's crazy because like I, I i wasn't able to give you any of the photos you know and i look and i'm like yeah uh, I, I wasn't but it was also my first time doing it and you know the photos weren't like the best that i i but but i still found some that i was really proud of but like I, I was critiquing like i said i was giving that artist critique like oh no these aren't great I'm still not at the level that these guys were at because, of course, you're seeing you. I followed all of these guys and got all their information networked. And, and I was like looking at all their work and, and, you know, how you just like start doing that. Like, even though you don't want to, you start doing that comparison. And you're just like, damn, yeah. you're like, crap, like that. My, my, my stuff doesn't look anything like that. And uh, but then like then I look back and I'm like, but someone saw something in me and still hired me to be mm. there which got me there the next year 
and uh, the next year. And I think too, like whenever you're creating art and you're creating these technical things, you see all the flaws and everything as yeah. compared to whenever you see someone else's finished product, there's not this historical timeline of every single editing step that went into the process and you can see every single edit in their finished product. You yeah. just see this beautiful image that they've created or, you know, and, uh, and when you look at your own product, you're just like, you're so hyper aware of everything that you feel is like wrong with it whenever you're not really putting that same level of criticism on other people's work. And I'll even find in my own, uh, in my own time, like for like songs that I've edited or, you know, you know, produced yeah. and I'll, I'll listen to something I did like 10 years ago where I'm not wrapped up in it and I can't even remember what the hell I was doing. I just play the song back or somebody will play a song that I made for them. And I'm like, oh, that does actually sound pretty good. I guess I did a good job on that. But in the middle of it, all I can hear is every little thing I don't like about it. And I can't hear any of the stuff that I do like about it. I'm trying to make it better, I'm trying to make it better, trying to make it better. Until they finally go, look, I can't spend any more time on this. We're going to call this done. I always have to just go, we're going to call it at this point. And I could spend forever my whole life mixing one song. I definitely could. And it just will never be up to the standard that I think it should be at. But then you step away and you come back and you're like, what the fuck was I talking about? It sounds great. Yeah, I yeah. have thousands of photos like that yeah. um, where I've just like kind of left over like where I didn't finish. And I feel like one of the the most humbling things that I actually had to go through is like I um, – is that the, the best – the photos that I've always been questionable about, the ones that I'm like, uh, I don't really – I don't know what I feel about. Like I kind of like it, but then it's like – it's not like really like what I wanted out of it or something like that. Wind up being the most liked or the most like viewed photo and everybody gives me compliments on. And I'm like, and I'm trying to see what they say that they see in it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> but like at the same time, I really like one thing that I've always, that I've taken as I've gone. And it's actually why I've slowed down with some of the work. It's like not comparing is like not it's like really just finding your own niche, like your niche like you know like and just really like toning in on your own style and just not caring what anybody else is doing like i i can genuinely say that now if you asked me this like four years ago i couldn't answer that honestly but like i can genuinely say now that i don't care what any other photographer is doing I don't care about their editing style before it was like following a trend and I had to like, I had to match everybody. It's like, no, like I've like, I've kind of got my own style now. I've got like, I, I know what I'm doing. I've, I've learned how to do it on my own and I've kind of taken the negative and the positive and I've combined them in some way. Like, because like, even though those negative comments or the negative feedback that I've gotten or I've given myself, like I found some positivity in those. And I'm like, you know what? Someone told me that I edited a little too dark. That was like a big thing when I was like, <laughs> like I had a huge thing for shadows. Yeah. I still do in a sense. I still really do love shadows, but like I, I saw what they were saying one day and like over like criticized my stuff. I was like, Oh no. I was like there, there, it is a little too dark. And I, I got a little butt hurt by like you know those comments like you know like oh man you know they are a little too dark but that was my thing that was like something that's how i started off i didn't care like i was like i like shadows this is i don't see a lot of photographers it was something i felt like i was being like so original like you know what i mean <laughs> like i was like i don't see a lot of people because like you know in miami everything is bright and very saturated and contrasted yeah. and all that that was like the vibe and i was just like well, I want to do something a little bit dark and I want to, I wanted to be focused more on shadows and like, and just like more like less on the highlight, more on the shadow. And, but it got to a point where I was editing to the point where I was like, where's the, even the subject. Yeah. So like, but now I have found a middle balance of being able to still tackle on a heavy shadow while still being a vibrant photo and still having that kind of like that dark nature to it. So it's like taking that that negative and making it into a positive while like kind of, you know, balancing it out, which is still creating my own little style. So I it's 
if any advice that I could give to anybody is just stop paying attention to everybody. <laughs> like, stop, like if you're an artist, don't stop paying attention to everybody. Like that yeah. is the worst thing that you could do is pay attention to any other artist. Really. It's like you can learn, you can like, you can get like little ideas, but like comparing, that's the worst thing that you can do because you're, you're your own artist. Yeah. And it takes time and everybody's at a different it place does. in their journey. It really man. does. Yeah. To think about it, like, it's like, wow, it's been like five years and I'm still like, I just, I feel like in the past year and a half, maybe going on to, I've really honed in on my own style and like been proud of like everything that I put out. Like, and it's like, now I can go back and I can critique or like, I'm not so much critiquing myself anymore in the sense of like, where it's de making me depressed. It's more like okay, I could tweak this a little bit better next time. I'll just do this next time. You know, it's more like, oh, I just see the growth in it. Like rather than like, oh, this is nice. It's just kind of finding that like balance once you're like there and then stop like being so hard on yourself. <laughs> I feel like every artist, especially photographers, I feel like we go through that a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's so you have to be so expressionate and uh, like in a still photo. <laughs> It's you know it's a it is art man and it it's is. it's a really complicated piece of art that you you get yourself involved with whenever you're doing photography man you're doing technology but you're doing this visual yeah. uh, skill set as well and uh, uh, for me photography's been a fun little game that I've been playing with myself like cause it's coming out of the audio and learning how to do all this video and and photography it's it's a completely different animal man it and really it takes a is. lot of work. It's it's so um, it's just like you know when you're writing a song how you could be vocally, you could you could vocally tell a story and you know with a song like you know whether it be rapping whether it be singing, whether it just be like slam poetry like it like in a sense like you know it could literally you could tell a story through that and it's like trying to put that into just a solid picture and just. It like it, it you know, how they say a picture has a, a thousand words or like you know it can s express a thousand world, words and it's so true if you truly understand someone's like point of view or what they're doing and like seeing their vision which can be different for everybody which is the wonderful part about art is that like everybody can see it differently but as long as that story it can be told to them and they can see that that's the beauty of art is that a story it, someone can represent it could represent something different for everybody and but as long as you're getting a story across is that's what makes photography hard and um it's not so much the the technicalities of course but even with like your non-technical i even i look back at some of my photos and even know that they're horribly edited i understand <laughs> like you know what what was being done and like the people around me or the things that i was in the way i was expressing they understood what was being done or like because that's basically what walked me into photography in general is just like trying to express my feelings yeah, man. Yeah, just trying to express my feelings. Like, and it's just like, because I, I, I feel like I couldn't do it vocally. So it was like the best way was just like, let me express myself. And it's just like, as long as you can express yourself, you're going to be telling a story. Like, I don't know, not to get a little deep. <laughs> no, I dig it. And I, I was digging around here trying to find a nice one that represents, like you were talking about working with shadows a lot. Yes. And this definitely has some interesting shadows going on in the image and everything. Kind of an example of what you were yes, you know, referring to. It does. And I mean, this is, if I could get to this photo too. Hold on one second. Here. Okay, right there. So I can get a little bit more details with the explanation. Um, as you can see, like this was, if you are there's a little pro problem actually in this and something I didn't notice until after, um, I was really proud of this photo though, um, because I actually reconstructed a lot. Um, not trying to say that the model isn't a good looking gentleman, like, you know, prior, but like, you know, when you get into Photoshop and you start learning different things and different, like you want to use them. Like you, it's just the way it is. And there is beauty in the art of Photoshop as well. Like, you know, to be able to recreate a, a whole brand new image out of something that it wasn't 
is art. I, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> In my personal opinion, that is still very much so art. But here, the um, the shadows that I was playing with, because it was getting towards the end. This was the, towards the end of the photo shoot, um, and it was um, it was getting towards the end of like the day. So like um, that shadow was really really harsh, believe it or not, on the on the left side of his face. So I had to brighten it up, which you could see the extra highlights that I had, but that caused a little color diller, dis. Um, um, color distortion like on his eyes as you could see um, it's not really noticeable it's something I notice now like you know what I mean um, it gives a little like pinkish blue vibe under his eye looking like he has pink eye um, <laughs> but that's but from afar on a Instagram post not a big deal no one's gonna notice and that's but I didn't notice that it's actually something that I look back and I saw and this is also the first time this photo actually this exact photo was the first time that i actually tried a new technique for um skin retouching this was actually when i learned um a different frequency separation thing it's when i used the um the magic brush because before i was doing a selection tool and then i was just kind of creating like a gaussian blur and then i was just adding in grain as a form of texture and this one when i was using the mag magic brush it allowed me to just manipulate the texture that he already had there it's overdone and i didn't have the correct um i guess you could say photoshop formula for it yet um <laughs> i like kind of like saying that um photoshop formula for it so that's um that's why um it's kind of textured all around um but I honestly was so proud because I was like, I finally, like beforehand, before this picture, I was doing things that were just kind of a little too soft. And if you know what I mean, it wasn't giving a little bit of texture more realistic. Um, but this was the first time that I actually had got it down to the point where like I understood what I was doing. Like I actually understood, but I've t I'm self-taught on Photoshop. So it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a YouTube tutorial. This was actually, this took a lot of like, just like trial and error because like what YouTube tutorials will teach you when you go on to photos is they're going to teach you the basics of just how to get to that actual setup. But you have to figure it out yeah. on your own from there. It's like, oh, if you know how to do this, like, you know, like you can go on to YouTube and be like, oh, how to cut out an image. And they're going to just show you because they're professional and they know how to do it and they can cut it out like with it super fast. But when you go to go and do it yourself, you're like, wait, how, <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. How do you get this done so fast? Like, yeah. like, this is not there's no way that you did this this fast. But it, it takes time and it takes practice. And a lot of people just think that it's just like, oh, you go in here. and No, there's so much more to it. Yeah. There's so much more. And understanding um, like the core principle of the technique you're doing, man. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's it's a whole new animal every time you come into photo or for me anyways, every time I walk into Photoshop, I'm learning a new skill and it's like I'm gonna fuck it up like three times and then I'm gonna okay, I get what's happening now. I'm yeah. understanding the process that's going on in there as opposed to just following along with the video oh no you have to follow and it's it's crazy because like you have like that's what makes it also just as hard as everything that else that you do in photography is that like with every single setting or every single photo that you're taking a picture of like you can't approach it the same way with everything like you can't approach it in photoshop so if you're in a low light situation and you have to bring it up you're not going to want to do your highlights from the beginning like but like here like in this photo kind of like this where it's like you know it's got a deep shadow but like i could still focus on like doing a little bit of the highlights and stuff like that and then i could do the frequency separation and then i can like balance it out and make it look even if it was in a low light situation i can't do that like it, like at least well i can't say you can't do it it's just in my personal opinion if you take it if you take it that route it's going to look a little muddy and I don't like that. Yeah. Like if, you know, it's like you have to go with a different approach. Some some things you're going to want to edit like straight up. 
but I've created a own little routine. Like if you know what I mean with the way that I approach different photos, but I kind of keep, I guess I could say I have a little comfort zone with the way that I keep with certain things and the way that I shoot now. I, I love editing so much now because now I understand it. Um, that like, when I'm shooting something now, I'm already envisioning like how I'm going to edit it. I'm like, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, Oh, this is so amazing. I'm definitely going to tackle it like this, but I always wind up changing it up because you know, that's just how it is. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's how I definitely like, that's definitely how I feel about Photoshop. Photoshop is probably one of my favorite things. Um, other than actually being the like the photo shoot itself, yeah, like I love the editing process. Sometimes it does get overwhelming, especially when you have like multiple photo shoots. It definitely can get like overwhelming because there's a certain quality that you like set up for yourself and that you promote for yourself. So it's like you have to keep that up. And sometimes like people don't understand that it takes around like some of these photos. Like you know when you get super detailed, it takes around like thirty. 30 minutes to sometimes an hour for like one photo i'm not saying that i've gotten it down where like there's certain things where like i can lower the process like i've got like you know like presets sometimes so like you know like i can send it to lightroom when i'm done doing photoshop so that makes that like you know the color grading a little bit easier so um but Sometimes, like I, I make my, I make things a little bit complicated for myself. I guess on, pur like, not to be on purpose, but like sometimes I just like want to be so intricate about it that I don't want it to like be like I want it to have like kind of like a same tone, but then I don't want it to. But I want this one to be a little darker, or I want this one to be a little bit more exposed, or I want this one to have a like, but all have like a matching tone and still be aesthetically like together. And it's just sometimes reaching that point makes and you need a little bit more preciseness. And you can't get that exact preciseness in Lightroom, in my personal opinion. I've seen people do wonders in Lightroom, and I'm just like, that's great. Um, <laughs> But I uh, personally just love using like, which is the same thing essentially is camera raw. And I, I get those things, but sometimes I just like to control everything like with like curves adjustment and everything and channels like in actually like Photoshop right there, because I feel like you just have so much more control. Does it take an extra step? Does it take an extra five minutes? Yes, it does. But you know what? If you really care about the quality of your image and you're like really invested in it, then you're going to do it. If would I do this for like a full wedding? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, yeah, that, that would require a lot of work, but I, it, it's, it's one of those things that I feel like if you have the time, take the time. Yeah. Take the time, and especially when it's your own art and you're trying to express that. That's awesome. I dig it. I dig it. Well, you know what? We've been talking for quite a while, we man. Have. I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty place to, to to put a pin in it, man. And uh, I really appreciate having you on the uh, podcast. Right. And uh, yeah, I'll do a little outro. We'll get the heck out of here, man. And also, thank you to all the people hey. still hanging out on Instagram, man. The well, live stream is going on over there. That's fantastic. If you're still hanging out over there, man, check us out at spacebrainstation.com and Space Brain Station uh, on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. I'll definitely tag him, or um, I'll definitely tag him in the comments so everybody can definitely give him a follow. And I'll I'll save the live. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, you're man. Welcome. And uh, yeah. So uh, thanks for watching to the fullest with Jason Froberg. Hit subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, check us out on social media. Check out Quentin on social media. Hey, my name is Quentin. Um, you can check me out on Instagram at Focus on Q. It's the only social media platform that you're going to find anything else. Or you could check me out on TikTok, which is also the exact same thing. I do actually promote some of my photography there too as well. That's awesome. Right. I need to get a TikTok going, man. I don't Honestly, have one. I love it. Yeah, I do. I I can't. I'm not gonna deny it. I'm gonna deny it. I actually do like TikTok. Yeah, it's actually a really good app. I have to. Yeah, I, I gotta get one going, man. I got a ton of short videos to put Come on. Come on, there. we could definitely start one for the astrophotography. <laughs> That'd be fun. Honestly, well, maybe we we'll definitely that. should. Uh, we should definitely do that. Awesome. Good to know. Good to, uh, good concept, man. Well, yeah, this has been uh, to the fullest. Peace. All right. 
Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We hear new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.